The high wheelers are kind of fascinating. High wheelers were sort of like this thrill-seeking technology ridden primarily by sort of athletic young men. And the bigger the wheel, the faster you could go. And there are stories of practices where when they started going downhill and the pedals were directly connected to the front wheel. And so, you know, as fast as the wheel's spinning, so are the pedals. And if you're going downhill and you get going too fast, it could be hard to keep your feet on there. And so some of the young men would throw their legs over the handlebars and they could sort of leap off of them if the bicycles were crashing and kind of not get all tangled up. The types of bicycles that we ride today, I mean, something like this, when that was invented, that became known as the safety bicycle because it was considered much safer. Prior to the invention of mountain biking, there was a bike boom in the early 1970s. More people came to see bicycles as a potential viable mode of transportation, especially in the face of rising concerns about the environment. I interviewed a lot of the early mountain bikers. I also went riding with a lot of them, which was actually really crucial. Um, I learned as much going riding with them as I did sitting down with talking with them. Mountain biking as we know it today really did start in Marin County just north of San Francisco. It was begun by a group of people that were more into biking for adventures. And what they would do is they would take these old pre-World War II Schwinn cruiser bikes and get a ride in a pickup truck to the top of Mount Tamalpais and then proceed to rocket down it, down this mountain on the dirt trails as fast as they could and race to the bottom and parts often broke on them as they were riding. So they would learn, okay, well, this type of hub tends to break sooner than this other type of hub, so we're all gonna try and have the good hub. You know, essentially it was an iterative process such that they found eventually the best parts to put on a bike. So what's fascinating about this bike is like, it's, it's very well-traveled, you could say. I mean, it was in, I mean, the frame built in Marin County, but then we have the Brooks saddle from the UK. We have derailleur from Suntour in Japan. We have the TA crank set from France. We have a seat post from Italy just to produce this one bike. Bikers started to have more tension with hikers and horseback riders in Marin. It did subsequently, though, lead to the shutting down of most single track or narrow trails to uh, mountain bikes in Marin County. Other factions in the area built their own trails. And so people have actually built really fascinating trails that are built for riding in a pleasing fashion to create what they call a flow experience. A trail becomes, for a trained mountain biker, a line moving through that tells you where your bicycle is supposed to go. All these sort of like experiences were all intermeshed. I mean, Gary Fisher knew the Grateful Dead because he had encountered them when he raced in the Tour del Mar bike race, which was both a road biking race and a folk rock festival. I mean, today, I mean, how often would you, would you expect a band like the Grateful Dead to play at a bike race? This, this, these aren't the sort of connections that we would draw today, but in that moment, in that place, that made sense because bikes and the music scene were seen as sort of like a groovy, night, great thing that was gonna help make the world into the place we wanted it to be. There's all this cultural history and value locked in this collection, and what we try to do in Access is try to help people unlock that. In a collection this large, you have material on basically every major topic relevant to the history of the 20th century. We have over 300,000 holdings, and the collection spans from the Donna Cinema to the present, so we have a lot of everything.